Hey, what's up? This is Dallin Green. Uh, today we're going to be looking at a Photoshop tutorial for how to create a professional product image. Let's say you have a product that you're wanting to sell online, um, such as Amazon. In fact, that's the case for this product. Uh, my brother and a few of his partners started a company called Mental Labs. This is one of their products called Think. It's a brain supplement to help you focus. You can see in this image here, um, like this really blurry edges on the side, um, up around the bottle neck, uh, as well as the, the lid. Um, it just really doesn't look that professional. And so they came to me and asked me uh, to see what I could do. Well, I, I first came on here and was looking at these other you know products. And some of them look a little bit better than others, but generally I was dissatisfied with what I saw and kind of left confused by what approach would you take in creating a product image. It was a little bit of trial and error, but what I started ending up with wasn't even that great of a result either. It was something that looked like this. I had taken my image, this is the original image shot, cut out the bottle and putting it on a white background, there's something missing. It doesn't look professional. And so I started adding shadow beneath it um, to kind of give it a little bit of interaction with this fake infinitely white world. Um, added some shadowing to the bottom of the bottle here and then as well as instead of just having it a pure white background throughout just made it a a, a nice gradient. Um, we have some other versions of red, blue, but essentially this is what we want to do is we want to create a, an image that will be more attractive to potential buyers. So let's get started. Okay, here we have our original image. This was shot on the Canon T3i using a 70 to 200 millimeter lens. Um, the camera was only placed about three feet away and zoomed in slightly. And so this will be our starting point. Now our first step is to cut our bottle out of this background. There's a few approaches to do this. My preference is to use the lasso tool, the polygonal lasso tool right here. So first I'm going to double click this layer to make it more of an editable, editable layer. We'll call this bottle. Um, and I always like to edit non-destructively, meaning I can make my edits and if I make a mistake, I can go back to the original. So I make a duplicate so we just have the same layer duplicated so that if there's a mistake we can we always have a copy saved so let's begin first of all we'll focus on these sides since these sides are pretty much straight edges um, they'll be easy for us to remove first so command x on mac or Control x on windows is the cut command oh Looks like I need to turn off this bottom layer so we can see through. Okay, so that's what we have. Uh, we'll do the same thing to the left side. Go ahead and cut that. Again, Command X or Control X. Okay, now on the top we have a lot of curves. So what I'm going to do is switch to the Quick Selection tool, or W is your shortcut for that. Um, this tool works wonders. Um, it requires a little bit of fine-tuning at times. Uh, oh, like in this instance, you can see how it's uh, going over where we want it to. So what we'll do is we'll hold down Alt or Option and tell it to remove those parts. And I think we'll actually just come back and hand touch up most of this right here. Okay look at the other side as well as the top see how it's looking this side's looking pretty good I'm gonna go ahead and hit command X okay so we have a little bit of blue here on top and of course we need to get rid of this as well um, so we're gonna go back to our polygonal lasso tool we'll look at the right side first okay perfect okay also don't want that corner to be super sharp. We'll cut a little bit away there. Now we'll look at the top. We want to kind of get rid of this bluish hue that's creeping in there. That won't look good when we're putting it on a background. We want that gone. 
Okay, it's looking pretty good, except you can see here, um, if we get up close, it could use a little bit of touching up, so we'll go ahead and just do a little bit of manual touch up, make the cut a little bit cleaner than what our quick selection tool, normally the quick selection tool does a really good job, but this photo was a bit grainy and so it had a harder time uh, distinguishing that edge that we needed it to cut out. Okay, again for the bottom, I find that the quick selection tool isn't the best tool because you have all these similar colors. Um, because of this reflection, it was taken on a glass table, so we'll just manually go in there with our polygon tool and cut it right about where it contacts the table. And bring it up here. Okay, so that's looking pretty good right there. Next, we will create our background. We'll go layer, new layer, name this background. Bring it below our cut layer. Now what we're going to do here is create a gradient over here, the gradient tool. If you don't see that in Photoshop, click and hold and select the gradient tool. We'll, we'll be doing a radial gradient and because the way radial gradients work, if you can see here, um, it's only as big as how far you drag your mouse. So we want it to be very big. And this is a little bit of trial and error here. Okay, that's we're getting there. A little bit bigger. Yeah, I'll do a tad bit bigger. Okay, we'll keep that. So now we need to create some interaction between the bottle and this white space down here. What we're going to do is come over here to our shape tools. We're gonna to do the ellipse. Now again, for me, this is a little bit of trial and error. Um, we're going to make sure our fill color is black. And we will drag out a shape. You want it to kind of match where the bottle would be, where its shadow would be. Excuse me. That's looking pretty good. OK, and bring it below our bottle. So obviously, it has some work to do. What we'll do is we will duplicate this again so that we edit non-destructively. We have something to come back on. I'll call this our shadow. So what we just created is mainly for reference. We just duplicated that, and now we're going to be working with our duplicated layer, which is called shadow. First, we will go to filter blur, Gaussian blur. Uh, we'll go and convert that to a smart object. OK. So we want to add it a little bit of blur, something about right there. Now also, this is going to be our wider uh, shadow. You can see here I had two shadow layers, one that was wide, one skinnier, closer into the bottle. So this will be our wide one. The way we'll do that, we'll go to Blur, Motion Blur, and you can see how that extends that out nicely. Hit OK. OK. Um, we will actually drop the opacity for this layer because we'll be adding another shadow layer. We'll go back to our ellipse here. Um, this is why we saved it so that we can come back to it. Duplicate that layer again. We'll call this um, shadow close because this will be closer to the bottle. Go and turn that on. Okay, we are going to actually shrink this and bring it in closer to our bottle. A little bit more in. Okay, maybe not so much. And using the arrow keys, we can fine tune its position. That looks pretty good. We'll go ahead and add a Gaussian blur to that. But this time we don't want it to be as extreme. Something about right there, and we'll also take the opacity of this and turn it down slightly. So that's looking pretty good, but now what's missing is some sort of um, darker 
shadow on the bottom of the bottle. Right now we have it on the what would be like the surface that it's sitting on, but it's missing the sh the the darkness up there. Um, so what we'll go ahead and do, I'm going to take our bottle right here. You can see the bottle layer. Go ahead and duplicate that. We'll call this our mat, um, and we will do image adjustments curves. What we want to do is bring down it all the way down to black. So now it's just essentially a silhouette of our image. Something interesting is that you can see here there's a line here and a line here. That means that when we went to cut it, somehow I missed those. Go ahead and cut those. So now what we're going to do is create a new layer. We will call this our bottle shadow one. We'll be creating two layers, so this will be the first of the two. Drag that below our mat, but make sure it's on top of our bottle. Um, what we need to do is use the magic wand tool, select that area, and now make sure you select the bottle shadow one layer. And what we're going to be doing is creating a gradient. Now, this time, instead of being a radial gradient, we will be doing a linear gradient. Um, make sure our colors are from white to black. Um, and this is, again, trial and error. What we're trying to do here, oh, let me turn off the matte layer. What we're trying to do here, let me switch these colors by hitting that arrow, is simulate the bottle um, having a shadow on there at the bottom. Now, one issue with this approach is that the linear gradient creates a solid flat line across here, but our bottle is curved, meaning that black to white fade needs to match that curve. So what we're going to do is um, edit, transform, warp. What we can do is bring down these center points and essentially create a curved gradient here. Let enter. But we also extended how much space this covers. So what we need to do um, is hit uh, Command D to deselect. Go back to our matte layer, select it, come back to our bottle shadow layer, and we're, what we're going to do is cut off this extra black that we've created. Now right now our selection is all of this inside stuff. If we cut it right now, all of this gradient right here will go away. So what we need to do is right click and say select inverse. That reverses the selection so that when we cut, we keep all of this, but we cut all of the stuff we don't want right there. Command X, okay, now that's gone. Now what we need to do is change the transfer mode of this from normal to darken. And there we have that. Um, what we're going to do also is lower the opacity down. Something about like that. Maybe a little bit less. That's looking pretty good. Okay, now we're going to repeat the process, and this time we will be creating a smaller shadow right at the edge of contact with the table. So again, come back to our mat, select that. Um, we do need to create a new layer. This will be bottle shadow two. Hit okay. Uh, make sure that layer is selected. We'll go and turn off our mat layer. It retains the selection there. Um, come to here to our gradient tool. Now, if we just do a gradient, you'll see that this fades very gradually from black to white. But what we need to do is not have it fade so gradually. So slide this down to about right there. Hit OK. So now when we create a gradient, oh, <laughs> that's a little bit too thin. Let's go back and adjust that. Let's see what this looks like. That's about right. Okay, that'll be good for what we're doing. Now, we're going to go ahead and change the transfer mode to darken so we can see our bottle underneath. 
And for now, while I'm working, I'm going to turn off our bottle shadow number one. What we need to do now is then again go to warp, and we want to get our shadow, that gradient, lined up right with where the bottle will be making contact. That looks probably right about where that needs to be. Hit enter to finalize that. And hit command D to deselect. Now we need to go back again to our matte layer. We don't even actually have to turn it on to select um, our matte. So we'll just select there. Again, right click, hit select inverse. Select our bottle shadow 2 layer, command X. And all that's taken away. Um, so we have, let's see what we have so far. So we have our first shadow, our second shadow, bottle shadow one, bottle shadow two. Now bottle shadow two really needs to be, bring down that um, opacity. That's looking pretty good. Um, what we could have done a little bit better though is to make that gradient, when we did our gradient for that bottle shadow two layer, Instead of making it so harsh, I should have made it a little bit more gradual. What I should have done is extended this out a tad bit more. Um, but you get the idea. And when you're working on this yourself, you can make those adjustments and those changes. But for now, that's looking pretty good. So there you have it. This is how to create a professional product image. So hope you enjoyed it. We will see you next time.